This is Marine Lance Corporal David Brown in 2006 when he was stationed in Iraq, just outside Fallujah. Hey. Come on, David. Stay awake. We're here. And this is David four years later in Tampa, Florida. No, David. He's just had a seizure in a gas station parking lot on his wife's birthday. We're here. You're all right. Hang in there. It'll be fine. Just hang in there. Come on. Say something. When David was deployed, his Marine buddies called him the mortar magnet. It seemed that if David was standing post, there'd be a blast. One blew up and knocked him out for several minutes. He remembers nothing. His wife, Brooke, believes this event caused her husband's mild traumatic brain injury, or TBI. He's kind of hard-headed, and he wanted to stay in his unit. If you go home, you're a wuss, pretty much. If you ain't bleeding, you ain't hurt. He wanted to serve his country. He didn't want to, you know, say, I've only been here for a couple months. Adios. He just stayed as long as he possibly could and just dealt with it. He had one day of rest, and he was right back at it the next day. Days later, one of David's close friends was in a convoy hit by an IED. David tried to carry his friend to safety, but the Marine died in his arms. Brooke thinks this contributed to her husband's PTSD. He finishes up his deployment, he started being reclusive. He would back away from everybody, not want to be around anyone, not want to talk. He couldn't function the proper way. If we were to go out to eat, he would have to literally scout out the the way to get to the exits, what would be the quickest route. He starts shaking really bad when he's around a large crowd in a tight quarters. David told Brooke he began having severe headaches while he was still in Iraq. But that pain was minimal compared to how his body reacted upon returning home. It just kind of hit him out of the blue. He had come home, he said he had one of those headaches. I told him just to relax. I put a cold wash rag over his head, gave him Tylenol. Um, within about 15 minutes, he comes stumbling out of the room into the hallway, and he was whiter than a ghost. And he just collapsed and started seizing. He had foam coming out of his mouth. He uh, defecated on himself. Uh, he, he wasn't breathing for about six minutes. Um, he was just seizing beyond, uh, beyond anything I've ever saw. It, it looked like something straight out of a storybook. It took him a while to come back to, and when he did, he didn't know who I was. He didn't know where he was, what day it was, what year, nothing. Brooke and David's story isn't rare. The military reports that nearly 150,000 men and women have suffered battlefield concussions in Iraq and Afghanistan. But some doctors and lawmakers say the numbers are probably a lot higher because these injuries are challenging to diagnose and treat in a combat environment. What makes matters worse is that the symptoms of traumatic brain injury can often be confused with post-traumatic stress disorder. It's easy to treat a, a visual disability, you know, an amputee, um, someone that has a scar, you know, someone that got shrapnel. But David's TBI, it, it's inside. There's no scars to see it. Nobody really knows what to do with David. Not his family, not the military, and not the doctor who prescribed him a medication that only increased his seizures to three per day. David says he never experienced seizures before joining the military. Now, they're unpredictable. Doctors yanked David's driver's license, he's unable to work, and Brooke doesn't leave him home alone with their children because David could have a seizure and lose consciousness. Mental health is hard to come by because it's It's like a catch-22. Some people, you know, may fake it. Other people are, you know, it's legit. And my husband's living proof of it. Finally, in 2010, David began receiving treatment in the TBI ward of the National Naval Medical Center in Bethesda. Still, Brooke and David were left with a pile of medical bills because it took more than a year for David to receive full disability benefits from the military. Living just outside the Marine base at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina, and with a new baby on the way, Brooke quit her job to take care of her husband. It's hard to do. I try to take as much as I can on to myself, 
because I can deal with it a lot better than what he can at the moment. He doesn't have to worry about, well, we're 60 days late on our car payment or 60 days late on our house payment and we're fixing to get the notice of foreclosure. I don't want him worrying about it because that right there is going to pull him down even more. And the one time that he did, he put a shotgun into his mouth. I would die if my husband died from that. What are you going to do, bro? Stand by my man. He stood for me over in Iraq. The least I can do is stand by him now. How old are you? I'm 22.